in this video, I'll demonstrate how to use NetLogo to simulate segregation. The model we're going to use is called segregation. To access the model, we go to File, Models Library. Under the folder Social Science, we select the model segregation. This is the description of the model. This project models the behavior of two types of agents in the neighborhood. Agents means people. The orange agents and the blue agents get along with one another, but each agent wants to make sure that it lives near some of its own. That is, each orange agent wants to live near at least some orange agents and each blue agent wants to live near at least some blue agents. The simulation shows how this individual preferences, which is at the micro level, at the individual level, ripples through the neighborhood, which is the macro level at the neighborhood level, leading to large scale patterns. This project or this model was inspired by Thomas Schelling's writing about social systems, such as housing patterns in cities. Let's open the model. First, let's set up our model. Density 95% means the occupancy rate of the houses in this neighborhood is 95%. Unoccupied houses are represented in white square in this neighborhood. Percent similar wanted, 30%. This is very similar to the tolerance level in our party model. It means for me to stay in this neighborhood, I want at least 30% of my neighbors are similar to me. This is my tolerance level. Is it a big ask? I want 30% of my neighbors are similar to me. You're still in minority by number, and 70% of your neighbors are someone who are not similar to you. You can change the density or the occupancy rate by using this sliding scale. In this neighborhood, squares means the houses are occupied by somebody. We have blue people living in the neighborhood, and we also have orange people living in the neighborhood. X means people who are not happy. This is the number, so right now we have about 2,500 residents in the neighborhood. Over 400 residents are not happy. Why are they not happy? Because less than 30% of their neighbors are someone similar to them. And the percentage of the residents who are unhappy is 16.5% and they are represented by X's in this neighborhood. So once we click go once, those unhappy residents will move to another neighborhood. And this move may tip the balance of the neighborhood composition in the new neighborhood as a colleague go once. We have smaller percentage of residents who are unhappy because they moved to new neighborhoods. Even after we click go once again, now we have even smaller percentage of residents who are unhappy. Let's click go to see what we will end up with. Now, 70 5% of the residents are similar. Now everybody is happy. But we ended up with segregated neighborhoods. We have patches of orange residents and we have patches of blue agents. And this is at the tolerance level of 30%. Our individual preferences for our neighbors to be someone who are similar to us leads to segregated neighborhoods or segregated city at macro level. Of course, this is a simulation. What about in real life? Let's look at city of Atlanta. This is the map of race, diversity, and ethnicity in Atlanta on the website bestneighborhood.org. Let's look at the neighborhood racial makeup. White people are represented in blue color most of the white people live in the north of Atlanta. 
black people are represented in green color. They mostly live in the south of Atlanta. What about Asian people? They mostly live in Johns Creek, Swanee area. What about Hispanic people? They mostly live in this Chamblee area and a little bit Marietta, Smyrna area. This is what's happening in real life. Our individual's tolerance level for our neighbors who are like us leads to the segregation of the city or the neighborhoods. Let's go back to our model. You can change this tolerance level. For example, you can use this sliding scale and change the tolerance level to 60%. What does it mean? It means that for me to stay in this neighborhood and not to move to a new neighborhood, I need at least 60% of the people who are similar to me. Let's click our model and see what will happen. Now our model is still running. We look at the percent of unhappy people. We have very few unhappy residents because most of the residents are someone similar to them. The difference between the tolerance level of 30%, 60% is that with tolerance level of 60%, for example, I want myself to be in the majority in the neighborhood by whatever trade you are looking at, we end up with more segregated neighborhood with 99% of the neighbors are someone who are similar to them. And this tolerance level of 60% leads to more segregated neighborhoods than the tolerance level at 30%. How do you describe this micro motives and macro segregation at the society level? Of course, there are so many theories to describe this phenomenon. If you want to know more about how other scholars explain this phenomenon, I suggest you read this book, Micro Motives and Macro Behavior by Thomas Schelling. You may find some insights into this model.